Cross-country racing is huge. 2018's XCO World Cup saw massive crowds and viewing figures that eclipsed even downhill. But even if you're not an aficionado of the pure physicality of cross-country racing, that doesn't mean to say you can't benefit from the latest tech. Because an increasing amount of brands are producing pumped up cross-country races that double as short travel trail slayers. The basic premise behind this relatively new category of bike is that you take a lightweight cross-country platform, often the same frame that's used by the cross-country World Cup racers, and basically add a longer travel fork, possibly a different shock, a dropper post, better tyres and more trail-oriented components. And it's the mainstream brands that are leading the charge with these hyped up cross-country racers. So let's take a look at two of the front runners in this battle for short travel supremacy, the Specialized Epic Evo and Scott Spark. In last year's race bike test, the RC version of the Scott Spark shone brightest and took top honors with its flawless blend of race bike speed and trail bike versatility. This particular model is the regular Scott Spark 940, and it ekes out the travel to 120 millimeters and adds a dropper post to further blur the lines between race bike and trail bike. Even though the Alloy 940 shares a frame very similar to the RC, a bike itself designed to help Nino Scherter win Olympic gold, a few minor tweaks to the geometry and tubing really aid its trail bike confidence. The 940 gets Scott's twin lock handlebar mounted remote to provide three distinct travel settings. Push the lever and the rear suspension effortlessly flicks between the full 120mm travel, a shorter 85mm traction mode and a complete lockout. And the inverted trunnion mounted shock ensures that the remote cable is neatly tucked away inside the down tube. Up front, Scott reinforces the trail emphasis of the Spark 940 with a stout Fox 34 fork, albeit a lower spec rhythm version. This comes with a GRIP3 damping cartridge and is hardwired to the twin lock remote to offer three settings, just like the shock. The 1x SRAM Eagle drivetrain on the Spark mixes a 12-speed GX rear derailleur with the latest NX shifter to provide smooth, reliable shifting. And Scott doesn't mind mixing and matching brands either. The brakes on the 940 are Shimano SLX, with the extra stopping power coming from the bigger 180mm rear rotor. The SLX levers have a similar profile to higher-end Shimano brakes, just without the tool-free reach adjustment. And they offered more consistent stopping power than the SRAM level brakes on the Specialized Epic, especially in wet conditions. One unique and somewhat annoying aspect of the Sparks build is the reliance on Torx bolts. This is not just for the frame pivots, but also for all finishing kit, thanks to the component partner Synchros. And while Torx heads should prevent even the most ham-fisted of us rounding off precious fixings, it does mean you need a multi-tool with all the correct sizes to keep things rolling out on the trail. One cost-cutting area of the Sparks build is the Synchro's X25S and Formula wheel set, contributing to the extra half kilo in weight over the Epic Evo. Robust they might be, but these hoops make for sluggish acceleration. Sling a leg over the Spark for the first time, and it's obvious that it's more of a trail bike than an out-and-out -out race machine. The extra travel and the boosted trail fork encourage us to ride it flat out. It's a really fun bike, and when the terrain got rowdy, the spark was the bike all our testers wished they were on. Given how capable it is on the descents, we were surprised as to just how good the spark is at climbing. Not the flat out smooth type of climbing though. The lighter wheels and tighter rear suspension of the Specialized make it the king of the fire road climb, but proper nagery steep technical climbs. In this instance, the active rear suspension on the Scott really claws into the ground and provides levels of grip only held back by the minimal tread of the tyre. We were also surprised at just how small the bike felt, much smaller than the generous 460mm reach measurement on the size large suggested. We can only attribute this to the 740mm handlebar. When Specialized launched the new Epic cross-country bike in 2017, the designers had already been playing around with a few different versions, incorporating dropper posts and longer travel forks. What they realized was that despite the lack of travel, it turned out to be a really capable trail bike.
The design team was so impressed that the Epic Evo was born. It's now available in two complete models, the high-end Epic Expert and this, the Epic Comp Evo. If the M5 aluminium alloy frame on the Epic Evo looks similar to the standard alloy race version, that's because it is the same frame. It's only the longer travel fork that boosts the geometry and gives it its trail bike characteristics. During the last round of revisions, Specialized switched up the Epic to a flex day suspension setup while retaining the distinctive brain shock. The smart part of the shock is the inertia valve mounted at the rear axle. It's what determines just how the shock reacts to rider inputs and the terrain. As such, sprinting out the saddle and climbing on smooth terrain keeps the shock locked. Hit a bump though, and the shock opens and remains open for as long as the impacts keep coming. The threshold can be adjusted to five levels of brain function, from efficiently firm to almost switched off and fully active. We say almost because it still retains the slightly disconcerting knock when it opens up on single hits. The 120mm Travel RockShox Reba RL fork doesn't have a brain, but it gets a really progressive compression tune, and it certainly feels less supple and more efficient than the Fox fork on the Scott. The obvious drawback being that the 32mm Reba chassis isn't very stiff, but this is offset somewhat by using oversized 28mm torque caps at the hubs to reduce flex. You wouldn't expect SRAM's entry-level Eagle drivetrain on a £3,000 bike, but the 12-speed NX kit delivers crisp shifts every time. The only real sticking point is the heavy cassette that uses a different fitting to the rest of SRAM's 12-speed range, leaving no simple way to upgrade it without also changing the free hub. While the fast road and fast track rear tyre is less than ideal in most situations, it does feature the tougher grid casing that should increase confidence going into rockier sections. The more aggressive ground control front tyre does offer a better and more predictable level of grip though, while saving weight. Compared to the Scott, the Specialized feels taller and rangier, with a slightly more nervous and flighty feel at higher speeds and on technical descents. But it does give the Evo an engaging ride quality, and one that really does reward hard work. Yes, the rear suspension can't be preloaded in corners the same way as a conventional shock, but the way the brain shock isolates rider effort really makes the Epic Evo climb like a beast. Pointed downhill, however, and the taller bottom bracket height feels like you're perched on top of the bike, making it a constant balancing act to keep the front wheel weighted enough to maintain grip without feeling like you're going to be launched over the bars. As such, raising the front end and shortening the stem would definitely give the Epic Evo a more attacking riding position. The Epic Evo, with no uncertainty, retains its cross-country routes thanks to the brain shock and race geometry. For weekend racers who want to have fun on the trails midweek, it's a great choice. Yes, the brain shock still has a quirky response, but if you're transitioning from a hardtail to your first full suspension race bike, you'll love how efficient it is. The increased fork travel isn't enough to transform it into a trail bike, but it stops the Epic Evo feeling too nervous at speed and increases the versatility of the Epic well beyond the confines of the race tape. So there you have it, Specialized Epic Comp Evo and Scott Spark 940. Watch out for us reviewing more of this type of bike in the future. Well, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up with our latest releases. And if there's any particular models of bike you'd like to see us review, please put it in the comments section below.